we are going to test the limits of what CSS is capable of by making interactive tables. Naturally, we will use lots of JavaScript on the back end to make static HTML and CSS files featuring sortable, filterable, and paginated tables. My first goal is to convert a CSV file into a Flexbox table with Node. I use the pop-up parse module to parse the CSV and Nunjux templating to generate a static HTML file. To make life easier later, I want to separate the first row and the first column. I'm using Flexbox for easy reordering, and the rows will actually have equal heights, and the columns will have equal widths. It's possible to manually set different widths for columns if some text is significantly longer. We're going to awkwardly paginate both the rows and columns by fixing the height and width of the container and moving the data so that the correct rows and columns are visible. We will use CSS variables to move everything to the correct starting row and column. A group of radio buttons will allow the user to set the desired page of visible columns. The X variable will increase by 15 when the page two button is selected because there are 15 columns per page. We don't want the input element to be visible, but we will place a label on the right for the user to set the page. Then create radio buttons for each page. You can easily show all of the page buttons at all times, but we will instead just show a previous and a next button. We need these to be labels for different pages depending on what the current page is. To show different text, we can set the content of a pseudo element. The same process works for paginating the rows, but we will have 20 rows per page. To sort the rows of this table, we need to set the order property of each row differently depending on which column is selected. When column one is selected, we set the order of each row to be the value of the C1 variable. The value of the C1 variable in turn is the value of the first column of that row. When dealing with positive integers, we can just use that value, but for strings or other data, we can rank them at a time and use that value. To change from ascending to descending, we can set the flex order property to either row or row reverse. This sorting works very quickly for reasonably sized tables and pagination still works. Sorting the columns is slower and more awkward since we have to sort each row separately. Sorting both directions is always a problem if the data structure is not set up for it, and our CSS tables are definitely not prepared to sort by columns. If the table is small enough and the browser fast enough though, we can basically use the same process. I'm going to add one more feature to this table. The row and column that are currently being sorted will be highlighted and we'll also compute the percentage of the total each value represents. This feature makes the table larger as we need to add spans with the percentages and then hide most of them unless the corresponding radio button is selected. But I think it looks nice and the percentages do add some value to the analysis. For something that is a bit less of a challenge and perhaps a bit more likely to be useful, we will convert the spreadsheet from Google Sheets to an HTML table. I'm going to use the Google Spreadsheet module. The first thing to do is set up your Google account with proper authentication. Both Google and the NPM module are well documented, so check them out for the up-to-date process. Once you have created the sheet, you can insert the ID from the URL to create the doc and note. Then use the downloaded service account token to authenticate. Now that the doc is ready, just grab the rows and create a JSON object that can be used in your preferred table template. We'll create a normal HTML table styled with a bit of CSS. We can use radio buttons to easily filter the table. Exactly which filters are needed will dictate how you create and show these buttons. Checkboxes also work the same, but the user can select multiple options, which could be good or bad. The input elements need to be placed before the table so that the values cascade to the elements we want to change, but the labels can be placed anywhere. We will put the labels in each header cell. Clicking the header of a column will rotate through, filtering for any row where the value in that column is at least one or where the value is at least two or not filtering by that column at all. Filtering a table with two rows is no fun, so let's add some more data. Filtering by multiple columns will show any row that satisfies every filter. The third and final table we will create takes data from an API and generates a paginated HTML table. I'm going to use the Axios model to make the call to a NASA API for near-Earth objects. We will take some of the data returned to the response and create the table. We will sort it using JavaScript on the server. The table looks okay, but it has dozens of rows, so let's divide it into pages. To only show the first row, we can create a pre-checked radio button that displays the row one class. Then set the class of each row based on the loop index, which starts at one with Nunjax templates. Then we add a button to allow the user to change the page and increase the number of rows displayed when the button is selected. You can either hard code the class names to a particular page or have the selection change the display property for multiple classes. We will count the total number of rows to create just the right number of buttons. You can see these tables in action at cssole.com. Learn about upcoming near-Earth objects. See how some math expressions are postfixed. For each month since 2017, get page views for different Wikipedia projects broken down by country. Or check out the historical baseball stats that can be paginated, sorted, or filtered. 
If any of the code that flashed by was interesting to you, there are several links in the description. And go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe.